gosh, what are we doing? Lucky to Papa. There's Papa in Moab. Probably the year he got bit. <laughs> we had no idea what early symptoms of Lyme disease were or what untreated Lyme could do to you. And now when I look back, he had 100% had a bullseye rash on his shin where he got bit. It took us until 2020 to really kind of piece that together. And at that point he did test positive, but the doctor at the time said that Lyme disease isn't common in Colorado. So it was probably a false positive. This one is made in you. That is me and Papa. Do you want to hold it up so she can see it? Oh, here's us rafting. My name is Samantha Davis. I lost my husband to complications to Lyme disease and mold poisoning on June 5th, 2021. His name is Nate Waters. I mean, he got sick actually almost like four years ago today. I was actually on June 26th in 2018. I was pregnant with Felix and we were rafting one weekend. We have a raft. We were in Glenwood Springs. He said his hands hurt and I was like, oh, well, of course you were like rowing all day, like makes total sense. We drove back to Denver that day and he um, just ended up having issues from there on out. So the, the hands ended up turning into, um, like his skin just stopped staying on his hands. His hands turned really raw. Some days he would wake up and his whole face would be so puffy. He barely open his eyes. I suffered from like no, numerous things and very like mysterious things that like just didn't make sense. He ended up having something attacking his immune system that kind of amplified and suppressed his system to the point that um, it allowed the infection to take over his body and what ultimately he succumbed to. I think Lyme disease is a challenging medical problem in part because it's so variable. There's just no limit to how it can manifest. I'm Dr. Sean Naylor. I'm a physician and founder of the Sound Clinic in Denver, Colorado. I've always been interested in tick-borne diseases, and definitely tick-borne diseases is an area where the right medical care can be difficult to find because it's a controversial disease. I think that that leads some physicians to shy away from it. Doctors kept saying to him, this isn't what Lyme does to people. And you know, he was like, I've tested everything. I've seen dozens of doctors. I've spent thousands of dollars on this. Like, this is the only thing that has come up positive. I think that part of that disparity comes from the fact that different groups aren't always defining Lyme disease the same way. The bacteria that causes Lyme disease in the strictest sense is called Borrelia burgdorferi. It became technically true to say that there's no Lyme disease in Colorado if you choose to define Lyme disease very strictly as only something that is caused by Borrelia burgdorferi. But to use that definition is to exclude the possibility that people infected with Borrelia bassetti can get sick, and that, that unfortunately isn't the case. There are Lyme-like diseases, bacteria that are in that family that can be acquired from ticks in the state of Colorado, which cause similar problems. Colorado has many species of ticks, so they tend to be uh, important animals in our ecosystems, and they have a special human interest, particularly in the last few decades, because they are known to transmit and carry diseases. And they even come equipped with a unique cocktail of proteins and chemicals that might numb your skin so you don't feel that they're biting you. If you do spend some time outside and notice some concerning system, uh, symptoms, consult with your local medical professional. Fatigue and cognitive symptoms, pain in the muscles or the joints that can't be explained by trauma or repetitive use injury, those three symptoms together could be considered sort of a triad that should at least make people think about tick-borne diseases. Lyme disease is carried by a specific kind of tick. The carrier for Lyme disease does not naturally occur in Colorado. So Lyme disease transmission here um, is rare to non-existent, uh, which is why it is currently believed that any reported cases of Lyme disease in Colorado are actually coming from visits to nearby states. A lot of what Nate ran into was denial that Lyme disease actually even exists on the West Coast. And I think that was probably the biggest issue with our healthcare system when it relates to this illness. This is what he looked like normally. 
um, how just how thin he got. Um, his hair wasn't black anymore, it was kind of a gray, muted color. There's not a lot of Lyme literate doctors is what they call them in Colorado or in, in the Western United States. He tested positive multiple times on the Western blot. The, the notion that there's no Lyme disease in Colorado, I just think that that is dangerous and potentially irresponsible. There may be more primary care providers who choose not to prescribe antibiotics and therefore end up missing a, an opportunity to treat these diseases when they are more treatable. I think there's so much that we don't know. And in my experience for, with what Nate went through, that doctors want to err more on the side of ignorance than um, acknowledging that maybe this is something that has been severely understudied. Nationwide, the CDC believes that about 90% of uh, cases of tick-borne disease go unreported. And, um, and in a state where it's not thought to be endemic, where because it's not endemic, the reporting requirements are much more complex and arduous, that becomes sort of a, a self-fulfilling prophecy where um, in, in areas where it's not endemic, it, it, it doesn't become endemic even if it is. The hardest part with him gone is, um, I think, Felix, for sure. There's a video, we did like a cheesy gender reveal on Cinco de Mayo, and we had a pinata, and the video when he found out that he was having a son was the most joyous, like, innate moment, too. He just was just his, himself and just like, just so excited, and he had big plans for them. He wanted to do overnight fishing trips with him. And so I just think that the heartbreak of Felix being so young, he was two and a half when Nate died and he'll never get to know Nate and never, and Nate will never get to have that experience. I feel incredibly robbed of by sharing his story and his suffering. I hope that people take this more seriously and they realize how serious that it can become.